CEO Craig Smith. Bob, what do you make of this? Well, it's very, very dangerous because once they get into power, they cripple the opposition. Everything from uh, imprisonment to uh, uh, chasing them out of the country to murdering them. And if you look at the longevity of Fidel Castro through seven, eight, nine American presidents still creating mischief, uh, this does not bode well for our front yard, uh, South America, and it can happen again in Central America. It's a nightmare, frankly. You know, Craig, I think we've been focused for so long on the Iraqs and the Irans and even the civil unrest in Nigeria that we've ignored what's happening in our own backyard to our detriment, you think? Yeah, I think it is, Neil. Matter of fact, I think what happened yesterday is it illustrates the inherent dangers there are in investing in oil and gas exploration. Steve Harrigan just told us three billion dollars was spent exploring petro, you know, petroleum in, in Brazil, and now those assets could be taken away from companies like BP, Exxon Mobil. Where's Bolivia going to get the money to pay for this? What rate are they going to take these fields over? We already know that there are troops in the San Alberto fields that soon be sent to the Campos Basin and the Sant Santos Basin. This could get to be a real mess. You know, Bob, I'm just wondering, do they have the expertise that themselves, the Bolivians, to go ahead, seize the wells, try to get extract, whether you're talking oil in Venezuela or gas in, in, in Bolivia, uh, without the sophistication and the know-it-all that comes with uh, a lot of the American and British companies that are there? Well, remember the blackmail they will use on us. Let's not forget that when Mexico was going Trotskyite and they threw out Standard Oil of California, Chevron, where did Chevron go? To Saudi Arabia. Oil had been discovered back in 1927 in Kirkuk in northern Iraq, but the, the, ex, the explosion of, of oil in the Middle East came with Chevron being driven out of Mexico when they nationalized everything, going to Saudi Arabia. These things have a, a, a tail a century long, but here's what they'll do. If we don't cave into their blackmail, our big companies, they turn to China. If that sounds outlandish, why is China exactly. in the UN protecting their mischief in the Sudan? China will go anywhere with their expertise, and we know the, so the uh, Russians will also. Well, you could be right on that, Bob. China just uh, secured a $4 billion deal with Nigeria. Of course, it's dealing with civil unrest to extract more oil from them. So sure, and they'll jump across the Atlantic uh, in a heartbeat. You're a very good point. Uh, Colonel could, David Hunt joins it, us now, the Fox News military analyst in Boston. Uh, Colonel, uh, I'm wondering whether this is a military threat. Leave aside the energy concerns, but a military threat to our country now. Yeah, there's no question. Oil is a weapon. And I think what you're finding with Iran, Bolivia, and, and uh, Venezuela, that it absolutely is being considered. And why wouldn't, they, why wouldn't terrorists or terrorist states or states getting close to be a terrorist state like Venezuela, like Bolivia, and certainly Iran, consider it. It's, it, it's cheaper than for them, and it absolutely could hurt us. And we need to be very, very careful about it and figure out how to counter that kind of a threat. You know, the practical way to counter it economically, Craig, is to look for energy independence. In other words, to tap more energy resources here. We're always bottled up when we try to do that here. But to conditions like what exist in Bolivia, that exist in Venezuela, that exist in a lot of parts of the world, tell us that now time's a waste. Well, Neil, you are so right on the button. If we don't have a reason now to explore our domestic supplies on the Outer Continental Shelf in Anwar and the Great Basin, we never will. We've got to get away from these very volatile parts of the world where we're risking huge amounts of capital, huge amounts of lives, and potentially military threats when we can be harvesting domestic supplies of, uh, of oil right here in America, and especially the natural gas that we have. It can be done, Neil. But Bob, not, I'm not, just wondering what kind of leverage, but Bob, what kind of leverage do we have uh, when they say, look, we can go to China and they'll, they'll, they'll fill the gap. We can go to Russia, they'll fill the gap. Uh, we don't need you, United States. Well, it, it's too bad that Venezuela has gone the way it has gone because their crude was so valuable to us. And if they, he knows this demagogue, uh, Chavez, that he can... Uh, he can create a real economic nightmare in this country just by cutting us off completely. I mean, these people are traveling from South America all the way uh, by email first and then in person all the way to Amar Jardin in uh, Dinajad in uh, Iran. And it, it's all being woven together in, in a network of hatred against us that's frightening. That's why I think the greatest act uh, against patriotism in this country is in the Congress 
to say that we are going to spill American blood in, near the oil fields of Iraq and other places maybe around there rather than drill in a place that no tourists go to on the north slope of Alaska. I've never understood why the, the pressure of debate in the House isn't more on the lack of, of love for our military and our country's stability in drilling everywhere. Let's share, as they do in Alaska, the natural gas resources okay. off the Florida coast, Carolina, Georgia, with the average taxpayer and the voters in those states will demand that we look for natural gas there right. and California and Oregon. Well, it's a good, a good point. Colonel Hunt, finally, let me end with you. Is this now, in your eyes, the way that Bolivia has acted in the last 24 hours, a military threat? Yeah, I think it could, I think it absolutely needs to be considered. And the problem is we're very tied down in Afghanistan and Iraq. We're going to have to start looking towards South America and figure out what we can do in the near term. All your very smart guests are talking about some far term stuff. But the near term is if Bolivia keeps this up, what Venezuela does and Iran, we've got near term right now, this month, this next six months action that we have to look at both from a military standpoint, and economic standpoint. So yeah, absolutely. It's a threat. Okay, gentlemen, I want to thank you all. Appreciate it. Can the government throw you out of 